Hey, welcome back to the channel. You know, this, this project's almost done. I'm really excited about it. It's almost time to drive this thing around, but I'm really not excited for the subject of this video, which is gonna be painting. Full disclosure, I do not like painting. It's not something I enjoy. I'm not good at it. I've never painted a tractor or something this big before, so it's probably gonna be a disaster. Anyway, before we get to the serious prep work, there's a, there's a couple small things I'm gonna get done real quick. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll get into the, the prep. First up is sealing this hole. The gearbox is in here, so water is gonna get in here. I kind of mentioned this in the winch rebuild video, but uh, I found some, this is a one inch drain plug. It looks like it'll fit. Barely fits. So I think this went. Oh. All right, I had to look at some old pictures, but it uh, goes like this. Yeah. Oh no, oh no, look at that welding. There's about a square millimeter of penetration here total. <sighs> so it appears as though this is the actual original end of the shaft. And so what they appear to have done is they took some kind of collar, several pieces of it and uh, welded it all together this shaft's been cut here, so they just, to get that on. All right, well, we'll be ordering some parts off McMaster for that. I guess the next up, while well, that's happening, is um, I got a subscriber, I swapped some, some parts with him, and he sent me a couple new foot pedals. So these actually have a fair amount of life left on them. Uh, you can compare that to these. Not quite the same amount of life left. Unfortunately, one of these, is horribly bent, this one right here. These are mostly st straight, aren't they? Pretty good. Okay, well that looks pretty straight there. All right, let's see how this lines up here. That's a oh man, this video is just off to an awesome start, isn't it? Are these off like a D2? Anybody want these? I don't know. This is a, I'll have to look up. That's 3B something something, 7F something something. No, that wasn't even tight. You could probably see it from that other vantage point, but there's another set screw over here. Which is probably why this wasn't coming off. All right, it's already popping off there. Now for this end, there's actually some welding to remove here. Okay, so the old shaft coupler here, which I guess you would call this since it's putting two shafts together, 
was made up of three different collars here. You can see that it's welded together right there, not very well. And then the third piece is the one that broke off. These two have a woodruff key slot in them, but the other one that goes on this one does not. There's not a notch there. There is there. This may come as a surprise, but this is not the uh, stock way to do this. According to the Heister manual, if you have a seat tank, which is a, kind of a later D4 that had the you know integrated seat tank like I have there, um, this, this whole top plate was completely different. And then uh, the, instead of rotating here, there was like a lever to switch it over. And then a control line went over to the fender here and you had a forward and backwards on it. But this is obviously just kind of cobbled together. So if I ever do find the right complete top plate, I could switch over to how it's supposed to be. But this for now, I'll just leave it how it is. I looked up an old picture um, and I found that actually what I've done here is backwards. This originally was facing forward. So that's, that's why, I mean, so it wouldn't hit the, uh, the lever for the winch. So I need to flip that back around. I did find a slightly more beefy shaft coupler here. And um, so this only has two set screws, so I'll have to kind of drill in some notches into the shafts once it's on, but this should be plenty strong to tie the whole thing together. Probably shouldn't hammer on there, huh? Well, that was a tight fit. Yeah. That was me. Eventually, I'm going to get to painting on this video, I promise. Maybe. All right. For this part. So I do have the selector kind of in the center, leave that white mark to white mark. I think that's the center, it's pretty close. So let me just tighten this down and give it a shot. I need to find a pin or I guess I can use this. Okay, so can't move there. Uh, you can go farther there. not far enough there. All right, this is good. So this is actually correct. So I just need to adjust it over slightly, the handle. All right. So it's neutral. That's either forward or reverse. I need to get, I'm gonna find, obviously find the correct pin, but I'll just use a lag screw for now. That goes in there. Then my only other worry was interference here, but look at that, there's, tons of space. I wanted to adjust the tracks before I paint. According to the manual, you want these to be one and a half to two inches above the mid middle roller, the middle top roller here. Yeah, we got a little bit of adjustment to do. So we're at about two and a half. That's actually not too bad. It just needs a little bit of tightening. I haven't tried to spin the nut on here. Hopefully it's not too stuck. Think positive thoughts, I guess. Uh, that was the easy part though. The harder one is down below. It's a lot, a lot less room to work in here. Right. Give it a shot now. There we go. It's moving. Man, anytime you get into this undercarriage, it's uh, more work than you're expecting. 
I was kind of spinning in place there, so I torched off the rest. There it is. Yeah, see, I cut off the end there. Now, if I recall, I can tighten this, even though there's no fasteners in here, um, because these bolts on each side hold everything together. <sighs> Probably good to drain that fluid out. Ooh, it's, that fluid is not good looking. Ugh. Typically, you don't want your hydraulic fluid to be brown and milky like that. This is the largest Crescent Ranch Harbor Freight makes. It just fit the other nut. This one is a little bit not fitting. <laughs> oh, it's turning. It turned. Come on now. What are the chances I get through this without having to replace anything? Been cranking at this thing for a while. It's, uh, the threads are actually good. You look in there, they are quite clean over where the nut was. So that's great. It's not slipping. And I'm at right about two inches now. So I've taken a half off. I'm gonna go ahead and go to for one and a half on both sides just because that's less adjustment that I have to do later. Okay, I think we got it here. Yeah, it's right at one and a half. Maybe even less, so that's great. Uh, I have no worries about these threads like I was saying. It's, uh, I mean, it was pretty rough getting it turned but hopefully I never have to do that again. So I think this is supposed to ride over this pin, which is way worn down, but I do have one of these, so I might as well put it on. Would have been really easy to procrastinate on this job till after paint, but I'm glad I didn't because this would have messed all the paint up down here. So if you've been watching this, you know that uh, I replaced the spring on this side. So this, this side's gonna be a lot easier to tighten. There, that's a brand new spring with uh, everything cleaned up. Oh yeah. This is so much easier. It'll be good. Just to show you how much, that was an inch of adjustment on the tracks. So the tracks are inch tighter. And that's what that translates to. I didn't move this nut at all. So I can go ahead and tighten this nut up against it now. Yeah, and both tracks look pretty even as far as tension. It looks pretty good. So we're at 78 right there from the front. Let's check the back. And we're right at 78 in the back too. So hopefully that means this thing will track straight. I guess we'll find out soon. Yeah, at first glance these look like good cables, but then you start getting them closer. Like this one's been rubbing. O-rings look pretty good. I was hoping to get these tapped out and bolts put back in. That'd be nice. I think this is the right size tap. <clears throat> Little issue I found here. So the, uh, the bolts here and the bolts there are different sizes. These are three quarters and those are uh, seven eighths. So the threading is actually in the track frame. So that means that Either this one of these track frames is not original, which is hard to believe, but I mean this top idler is different than that one. It's, this is a newer one. Or they re-threaded it for some reason, but uh, it's making me think that this track frame over here is not the original one. It was replaced at some point, which is interesting. 
I'll probably never know for sure though. I mean, why would they re-thread it if they were just gonna weld it um, at the same time? And then you have like these brackets are different than these brackets. They're like different thicknesses. All right, well that's the body. So now to get the engine ready, um, there's a few things I wanted to do here. All right. Now, it's like an eighth of an inch from not fitting. All right, I just looked online. I found a new valve cover gasket for like $15. So I just, I just bought that. It'll be here in a couple days. I also found new seals. So this is what they look like. They go in here. These were $4 each. Are these just O-rings that got flattened? I'm not sure. Should probably clean the inside of this. So this needs something in here to keep this from rattling up and down. I used a walnut shell to blast this. It uh, did a decent job. This is so, was, had so much more scale than in here and this is because this is off the old engine. So the old engine, the uh, coolant system was pretty much clogged up. Here's the thermostat housing off the old engine. So you can see how bad the scale was in here. But anyway, this is the old thermostat and it has a bypass hole in it. And this is so coolant will flow even though when the thermostat's closed. This is the new thermostat. This is a uh, Gates 33388 is the, is the part number for this. It fits exactly though. But I'm gonna go ahead and drill a bypass hole just so it matches. And it looks like right here should be fine. I can pop this old one out to look at it. It's gotta be pretty crusty. There we go. Now I remember reading the big difference on this obviously is this, this ring around here. And the point of the ring I think is, I don't know if on this engine, but on some engines, it allows coolant uh, when it's closed, it blocks off a passage and then when it opens, it, it opens up the passage. I don't think that applies on this engine though because it doesn't line up with anything over here. The bottom of this is pretty uh, ragged too, so. I might have some trouble getting this to seal eventually, but for now, I'll just put it on. If water gets in there, it's obviously not an issue because it's a coolant passage anyways. Got the new seals in. I wasn't really expecting them to be O-rings, but just from how deformed the other ones were. So these are uh, nylon nuts. So hopefully that seals the thread some more. The, uh, the threads on the studs so water doesn't get in there. This, uh, this is like indented in. I don't know if you can see on that. It's, uh, there's like a, a, a clear indent on it and it's not going to seal very well. This one isn't as bad, but someone definitely over tightened this. Just. seen better days. New one was 20 bucks, so it can't go wrong. The voltage regulator does go right there, but I'm gonna paint that separate. These aren't stuck on here. Oh, that's should have should have expected that. No rust. Great.
I did get new uh, exhaust gaskets. They're in the mail right now. These are kind of... So this is the manifold that was on the new engine. It looks like there's been a repair here. This is the off the original engine. And there's this flange here. No weld. It's been torched off up here. So I'm going to reuse this one, obviously. I have, I actually also ordered the gasket here. So then I can, you know, fabricate my own exhaust coming out. This is the breather. I'll take this off for washing and painting, or at least washing. All right, so I'm gonna have to roll this thing back outside to wash it and roll it back in. I have, I kind of remember how hard it was to get it in here originally. So, um, and also right now it's sitting on these furniture dollies with these tiny little casters. It's kind of just a recipe for disaster. Now my big saw's at the house, so. This is bringing back memories. Pretty level. Well, this looks even more dangerous. It's pretty high up uh, off the ground. It is pretty sturdy on here though. I guess we'll find out. It's, it's safer than it was on those furniture dollies. I mean, these things were pretty ruined. That's going nowhere. Make sure I can get away from this thing in a quick, in a hurry. Oh, it's so much easier to roll. Well, that doesn't look good. So I'm gonna have to swap out those casters. I grabbed the casters off of the uh, crane over the excavator, and that's because I actually have proper casters for that ordered with swivel locks. So these are, uh, I think a thousand pounds each rated. So they, they are actually what I should have used in the first place, I guess. All right, attempt number two. Oh, much better. Trying to run it at an angle there because it's just gonna hit the side there. about half of an inch in too far, of course.
ATV was having a hard time pulling it. I'm not sure if it's just harder to pull or it's because I was on the pavement. The tires were skidding. Once I got into the grass, it pulled it pretty easily. Oh, where are you going? Watch this thing roll down the hill. Look at all the space I got in here now. So when this garage door is closed, a ton of dust usually blows in underneath it. That's kind of why I'm cleaning all the way around it and, and I'm cleaning all, everything kind of out here. That will it'll cu hopefully cut down on the amount of dust. I am going to put plastic down in here when I paint, but just the initial amount of dust was huge. Make sure we didn't get any water in the valve train. That's water, ton of water in there. This is a little bit concerning that there's water in here from that. I mean, I wasn't, I guess I was blowing on it pretty hard. So I noticed that oil, the oil I poured in here was draining out through these stud holes. So that's, Obviously how the water got in was not expecting that, but I guess it makes sense. They, uh, they're not blind holes. I'm gonna drop the uh, fuel injection oil here. There's probably gonna be water in here because I was spraying on this thing pretty aggressively. No, yeah. not yet. All right, now for the engine oil. There we go. I'm, uh, I was just thinking here while this was draining that I don't have anything else, any other container I can fit under here. So I'm glad there's less than five gallons in here. Oil looked good though, not much oil or uh, not much water in it. Let's take a quick look at the uh, washing I did here. So now on these, on these motors, the worst part for dirt is in here between the injection housing and the block, but I got it all out. It took a ton of spraying in there. It was pretty full. And all along back here, it was, it was full, but it's cleaned out now. Looks a lot more yellow. Um, there's still a few spots where I'm gonna have to kind of scrape a little bit and maybe sand. Like down here, this oil was like, just, I thought it was concrete at first. It was just stuck on there really good.
so I need to rotate it so I can get the idler back here. I can feel there's some grime in there that I can't get. This is all just rust. The hardest thing that I've seen is on this side, the sprocket has this caked on grease. The other side doesn't have this, but it's uh, really hard. So that's gonna take a little bit of work to chip off. But besides that, it's pretty clean. I was actually gonna wheel this thing in last night, but then I noticed a, uh, the paper towel I had shoved in here was missing. So I started pumping this arm back and forth and it did eventually shoot out, but also about a gallon of hydraulic fluid shot out covering this whole thing. So I had to re-degrease this, it's drying right now. But I used that opportunity to come in here and I wire, wire wheeled this sprocket. Like I said, the other sprocket's not this bad, but this one was covered in grime. <clears throat> I'm gonna let this dry for a day or two. I'm gonna go camping tomorrow. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the drain plugs to see if there's any water in there. There's sure to be water in here because this does have a couple open spots. Nope, no water, good. This is the steering clutch compartment. <sighs> well, there's some grind, but there's no water. No water. Transmission. No water. Oh, I forgot I put some fluid in there. Oh boy. Well, there was no water in there at least. All right, that's pretty positive. That yellow light is from the fluid that hit my uh, flashlight there. And then I did notice when I was working underneath it that there's a few, there's some dirt that like got blown up and it's sticking to the bottom. So I'll wipe that down uh, once it's inside and you know, vacuum it up. So this, keep in mind, this isn't a car that I'm painting here, but I would like kind of the flatter areas that you see to be somewhat smooth. So this is just like 300 grit sandpaper. So I kind of had the paint booth started here, but I re need to retape it now that I know kind of the areas I need to work. So I have the tractor kind of before that post so I can get in here and spray without running into that.
tack claws are coming back pretty clean, so. pretty much done with the prep here. I have the fan that goes on here. That's going to paint. I'm going to paint that separately though. I think it'll look better. The uh, front PTO goes off of there to run the hydraulic pump. So I've covered that off. Got some tape in there just in case. I did find some grime underneath there. So I'm going to clean that up before I paint. That's all taped off and that's all taped off. So I think that's everything. Oh, I got to cut that RTV out. Keep forgetting to remove this. This thing is, this. there's a shaft through here which is completely frozen to this. I'm not using the angle grinder because I don't want to spray metal chips all over everything. The engine took a lot of time. Uh, off camera, I did a lot of it, but a ton of little small grease spots that hadn't come off yet. So I spent a lot of time with a brush <clears throat> and brake cleaner to get it all cleaned up. This side especially was very greasy. It ain't pretty, but it's pretty clean. It's as good as I'm gonna get it um, without going crazy on it. But it's, I think it's ready to go. So last step then is gonna be this stuff. A lot of guys on the heavy equipment forums were swearing by it. So basically you just spray it on and then kind of just wipe it down. So I've been over this whole engine and there's like no dirt coming off, which is a great sign. And uh, supposedly this cleaner kind of dries. Once it dries, it's gone. I'm very happy with how little dirt's getting picked up here. Just a tiny bit. And this stuff isn't leaving a residue. I went back over the dry stuff, so it seems to be working pretty well. Okay, I think I'm ready to start painting. Before I do that though, let's take a quick tour of my setup here, just so you can see what I'm dealing with. So everything's in here, ready to go. I'm only gonna paint these three things. There's a, there's a bunch of other stuff to paint, but this is the first stage. You can see here, I got a fan, and this is to provide some positive pressure in here. This doesn't have like the super toxic uh, cyanide chemicals in it, like some other paints, but it, it is flammable and it is toxic. So um, this is gonna keep some nice positive pressure in here. You can see the, the wind or the sides are blown out. That's a good sign. And I did kind of put a few random speed holes throughout just so it would keep the air moving through here. Here's the other side of the fan. I got a uh, just a cheap furnace filter on the back so it's not sucking any dust in because it's pretty, it's pretty dirty in here. This might look like I went overboard with the plastic, but really the issue in here is it's so dusty. And in fact, you can already see stuff that's trying to fall down. That's why I plastic the whole roof and everything else is because it gets really, really dusty in this barn. Here's the sprayer I'm gonna be using. It's the cheap, it's not the super cheap one, but it's like a medium cheap Harbor Freight one. I got a, just a disposable dryer on there with a regulator. So the working pressure, a little bit low. It's set to 20, but I can adjust that later. I've never actually done HVLP before. I've done a lot of airless on like wood and stuff. On the other side of the hose. So these are both brand new hoses. I've never used them before. There's no moisture in them, no oil in them. Um, and I, I, you know, you don't want moisture oil in your paint lines. And then I have this regulator set to 80 and the other one's supposed to be set to, I think 25 or 35. This is also a dryer. So I'll keep it dry here and then hopefully the dryer on the other end catches it up. Here's the primer I'm gonna be using. It's obviously Krylon Farm and then I got the reducer. I also got for the actual paint too, I also got the Krylon hardener, even though I'm not using Krylon 
paint for the finished paint. So for my mask, I got a full face mask and this is really just because uh, I have a beard and I, I've used these before and these help a lot for, for facial hair. And then I got, this actually came with several different filters but I have the correct filters for this. And this will be nice too because it'll keep it out of my eyes. All right, well, I'm gonna have to leave it here for tonight. I dropped the uh, regulator and the, the dryer broke off. A big problem I was having, I don't feel like enough fluid was coming out, uh, enough primer was coming out when I was spraying, or maybe I'm just used to an airless. But later on when I got kind of to this part, I experimented, I added a little bit more uh, reducer. That seems to have helped. Other big issue is getting that whole spray gun assembly in here is kind of difficult. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just spraying whatever I can reach and then I'm gonna have to come in after with a brush and, and prime it and, and then paint it later too. All right, it's the next day. I'm kind of glad I broke that dryer because it, it let me reassess and kind of look at what I've been doing. And I've made a, a few adjustments here. So the first big issue, and I think maybe if you can, see, if I get the light on here, right, you can see it. Let's see, get an angle. You can see that texture. It's almost like an orange peel texture. Um, it's, it's really bumpy. So there's not a whole lot of smooth areas on this tractor. The fuel tank's one of them. I'd really like to get this worked out before I get to the actual paint. Either there's not enough paint coming out or I'm moving too slow, too fast, I mean, with the gun or both. So I'm gonna sand this back down and try to fix that tonight with another coat. The only other smooth area is the valve cover, which is not as bad, but it's still a little bit, you know, like, the, like that orange peel texture. So I'd like to fix that, this area too. It's good to work this stuff out while you're doing primer, I think, than, than the actual top coat. I got the new dryer on here and I, got a, I put a, a wobble fitting on so I can get hopefully into some more areas uh, without it bumping on stuff. We'll see, it'll probably end up just leaking horribly. One big mistake I made, let me show you. I showed this earlier and I'm sure someone's caught it, but I caught, I caught it after I looked at it last night. This is the airline for the hose, and I had it plugged into this fitting over here. The problem with that is that it's on the, this side of the regulator, and this regulator is like a step down. I, I have it down to 60 right now, PSI, which is a lot better. You don't wanna go 160, which is what the tank's at, into the, uh, that small regulator at the end. So now it's set up right where it's hooked up to the regulator and this dryer. I was emptying the tank for water a lot last night, while I would, every time I refilled the paint, I would empty that, but there was still probably some moisture getting through, which is not good. I also looked through the directions for the paint gun. There's, there's another filter that's supposed to go in right at the bottom of this. I think it goes in this tank, so I, I found that. I hadn't, didn't have that in before. So on this thinner, I was using a one to eight ratio, but it says on here that you can go up to a 20% by volume with paint, which is, a large amount that's like a one to what five so i'm gonna experiment i'm gonna do a
quite a bit more thinner in the next batch, and hopefully that makes the, the, the paint come out more. I, I don't know if I'm just used to using an airless, but it seemed like the paint was not coming out enough. I also got some bigger mixing buckets here so I can mix a bigger batch at the same time. When I go to the top coat, I'm gonna be adding a hardener and you don't wanna mix as much with the hardener because it sets a lot faster. So I'll be using uh, this stuff for the primer mostly. And then I got a bunch more of these for the hardener. And the, the final change I made was on ventilation. So I was fine wearing the mask, but once I took it off, it, it took a long time to clear out in here. Um, so just to give you an idea, against this face of the barn where this garage door is, in the evening, this is where the wind comes against the side. So what I'm doing now is I'm cracking it here. And when you do that naturally, the air wants to go, it wants to go up the stairs and out through the top of the barn. So I can tell just by feeling the, the wind in here or the air flow. Um, I have this fan still on, so it's blowing air out. And then the air is coming in through the door and it's meeting up and there's just a draft that's going up the stairs, goes up the stairs and then I added another fan there, which is blowing that way out through the barn. Got some adjustments to do. Oh, much better. how much dirt is already on that filter. So it's the next day. This turned out pretty smooth. It's, it's a way, way smoother than it was. And actually, as I was working my way through it, over here, it got to, gets way more smooth. And that's because I bumped the pressure up to uh, about five or six PSI, up to almost 40. And this side's a lot smoother. Uh, that's where I switched over. Up here, like this surface, and you can hopefully see the sheen on there. It's pretty smooth, nice and, uh, nice and clean. So, and then by the time I got over to the frame, I had it down and I was, I mean, even this stuff that's all super rough, the paint is, or the uh, primer itself is very smooth. So I think I know what I'm doing well enough now to actually put paint down. All right, last step is to take this chip brush here and go over all the areas I couldn't get with a gun, which is basically everything underneath. Quite a lot of surface area here, and then, you know, some areas in the undercarriage. Questionable welding down here. Okay, not even close to perfect, but I did, I did what I could here. So just, I mean, without taking this thing apart, you can't get every surface, but I got as much as I could. Got the rock guards on both sides, the whole underbody. I mean, there's obviously spots like up in there you can see I can't reach. Didn't bother going in there. That's all still painted. It is what it is. This thing isn't gonna go into a museum. And then uh, on here, you know, I did what I could. There's just spots where I couldn't reach or I missed. You get the idea. One thing, I don't know how I missed it up until now, but you see the end of the idler arm out there. Look at this. You don't see this kind of stuff until you, you prime it and you see the horrible welding, but this is just some kind of jury rig spacer here. That's gonna be it for this video. Originally, I'd hoped to have the priming and painting done in this video, but it took so long to prep that I just 
ran out of time. So next video is gonna be painting and then putting the engine in. The original plan was to paint the hood at the same time, but there just wasn't enough space in there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold off on the hood. And then once all this is out of here, I'm gonna cut the paint booth in half and then I'll do the hood and the fenders. Everything else I can brush, but I wanna spray like the flat surfaces of the hood and the, the fenders. So all this stuff here, I'll just brush that thing. Still gotta paint the radiator fins on here. I did get some uh, radiator paint, so I'll do that eventually here. All right, well that's it for this video. Like I said, next video is going to be painting everything, hopefully, and putting the engine back on. And there's a lot of small stuff that needs to get kind of cleaned up and painted before it's all back together, but hopefully I can get it started really soon. Um, I mean, it'd be nice to hear this thing run after all this work. So that's gonna be it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Really appreciate it, and I'll be back soon.